Hello, I'm Professor Jim Pastor, and welcome to Time Value of Money, the Intermediate Steps. Before we get started, just a quick refresher on three things you should do prior to any calculation. If you do these things consistently, then you'll make sure that you have set your calculator up properly for any problem you're about to do. So the three things are, number one, make sure you're in the correct mode. Most of your problems, you'll be in the end mode. Sometimes though, for example, when we do the retirement scenario we're gonna go through today, you're in the begin mode because you have payments at the beginning of each year rather than at the end of each year. But generally, most of your problems will be in the end mode. But whichever one it is, make sure you're in the correct mode, either begin or end. Secondly, a neat thing about the Hewlett Packard 10B2 Plus is that you can set it up for the number of compounding periods per year. So take advantage of this great feature. So what that means is if you have semi-annual compounding, you need to set it up for two periods per year, quarterly, four periods per year, etc. So set it up for the correct number of compounding periods. And finally, and this, you know, sometimes it's interesting because people will sometimes forget to clear the calculator and then come up with the wrong answer. So make sure you always clear all. And when you do the downshift and hit the clear all key, you'll see the periods per year pop up. So it's a great time to double check that you've set it up for the correct number of compounding periods. So again, these three steps prior to any problem will put you in great shape then to solve the problem. Okay, so let's dive in. The three main calculations we're gonna look at for intermediate time value of money are yield to maturity, We'll also calculate a present value of an annuity due for a serial payment, and then we'll end with a serial payment for a future sum, our grand finale for the intermediate calculations. So, let's take a look first at a yield to maturity scenario. Roland Donovan purchased a bond on the secondary market today for $950. It has a coupon rate of 8% and will mature at the end of three years. And Roland would like to know what his yield to maturity is. Okay, in this scenario here, we have Roland purchasing a bond. Now, before we do our calculation, let's do our three steps. First of all, let's make sure we're in the correct mode. This will be the end mode. Bonds pay interest at the end of every six months. Make sure you're set up for the correct number of compounding periods, two periods per year. Bonds pay interest semi-annually. And then when you do the downshift and hit the clear all key, you're clearing the register, you're clearing the calculator, and then you're also able to double check that you did set it up for two periods per year. Now you're ready to begin. So $950 is what he pays for the bond. Now the money is leaving his hands and going in to purchase the bond. That would be a negative cash flow, it's leaving. So make sure you change the sign. So you hit the plus minus key to do that, changes it to a negative $950, and that will be your present value. When the bond matures, it's going to be worth $1,000. So that will be our future value, and that's a positive number. And remember, whenever you have both a present value and a future value that you're entering, one of them has to be negative, one of them has to be positive. And as long as you keep the cash flows correctly, whether they're leaving somebody's hands or coming into them, you'll get that correct. Now this particular bond matures in three years. So we'll hit the three key, the downshift key, and then in for number of compounding periods. When you do that, you should see the number six come up on the register for six compounding periods, since this is semi-annual compounding. And that should happen because you double checked your calculator prior to doing this calculation. And then last but not least, we have to enter in the coupon payment. Now a common mistake that students will sometimes make when doing bond calculations is wanting to put the coupon rate in as the interest rate. Remember, the interest rate, the I slash year rate, is always going to be what current market rates are, not the coupon rate. You always take the coupon rate and convert it into a payment. So in this particular scenario, this is an 8% coupon bond. So 8% of $1,000 would be $80. Semi-annual, so we take the $80, divide by two, so our payment is $40 every six months. So that will be our entry, $40. And notice the $40 payment is a positive number, because think about it, the bond pays the interest. Where does that interest go? It goes back to Roland, he can spend it. So that's a positive number. Okay, so these are the four 
entries we make, and then we're going to solve for interest rate per year. In this case, it's going to give us what's known as the yield to maturity. And when you do that, hopefully what you should come up with is 9.97%. Okay, now we're going to do a present value of an annuity due calculation. But before we do that, let's do an inflation adjusted return. Now, when you have an inflation rate that you're dealing with, you don't just take the difference between the rate of return and the inflation rate. For example, I'm going to use a 7% rate of return and a 4% inflation rate. So I don't just take the difference and use 3% as my inflation adjusted return, because if I do that, I'm not taking into account the effects of compounding on the inflation rate. So we do this formula. So what you do is you take one plus the rate of return divided by one plus the inflation rate. So 1.07 divided by 1.04, subtract one, hit the equal sign, and you'll come up with 0.02885. Now we're not quite done because on our calculator, we always enter interest rates as whole numbers, not as fractions. So we just need to multiply this number times 100. And when you do that, hopefully what you should come up with is 2.8846. So that is our inflation adjusted return, 2.8846%, not 3%. Now there's a shortcut you can use on your calculator. This is the way you can calculate it. The shortcut would be these keystrokes here. So in other words, you start with the inflation rate. So you take one plus the rate of inflation, 1.04, you'd hit the input key. Then you put in 1.07, hit the downshift key, and then hit the percent change key. That's the percent key on your calculator. And then you will also come up with 2.8846. So either way will work and give you the inflation adjusted return. Okay, now we're ready to do a present value of an annuity due calculation. And this is going to be a three-step process. And I think it's really helpful to think of this in terms of a diagram, a timeline. It gives you an idea of exactly the process we're going through and makes it make sense. First of all, first step number one, we're going to look at today. So in other words, you're going to figure out what do I need in today's dollars to live on. And what I'm concerned about in the future is when I retire that I maintain my buying power. So the first step is just really a simple future value calculation. What we'll do is we'll take a dollar amount in today's dollars over a certain number of years. We'll take the inflation rate and we'll solve for future value and come up with what would the dollar amount be in year one of retirement to maintain my buying power. That's the first step. The second step is solving for the lump sum that we need at the beginning of retirement to fund that retirement benefit. Now remember, in retirement, what is one of the main things you're concerned about? Maintaining buying power. So we're going to want to make sure that whatever payment we start with in year one continues to increase by inflation each year so we maintain our buying power. We're also going to assume that at the end of retirement or the end of our projected retirement that we're out of money. So I guess if we live longer, we have something to work with and hopefully we'll have dementia and we won't know it. But whatever time frame we use, we'll have zero left at the end, but we're solving for what lump sum of money do I need right here to fund my retirement benefit. And we're gonna use an inflation adjusted return when we do that calculation. And again, that's because we want to maintain our buying power. Now, once we solve for the lump sum here, we're solving for what's called the present value of an annuity due. Remember, annuity due just means you're in the begin mode. That means the payments are made at the beginning of each year. And it's important when you do a retirement calculation like this, or let's say you're doing the same calculation for funding education, payments have to be at the beginning of each year because you need the money at the beginning of the year to pay for that year. If you're sending a child to school, the school wants the payment at the beginning of the school year. They don't let you go to school for a year and then pay if you liked it or not. So that's why you're in the begin mode. And it's very important that you be in the begin mode when we do this calculation. Once we solve for this lump sum, then we're ready to do the third calculation. And the third calculation is a simple present value calculation. What we'll do is we'll take this lump sum amount and we'll discount it back to today but we'll do it at the rate of return, not at the inflation rate. 
because if you think about it, whatever we have here, if we get our rate of return, we'll then get to the lump sum that we need. We've already taken inflation into account. We don't need to worry about it anymore. So again, the three-step process, start with today's dollars, worry about inflation, come up with an inflation-adjusted amount for year one in retirement, in retirement, calculate, calculate a present value annuity due lump sum to fund the retirement benefit, taking into account inflation. And then once we have that amount, just discount it back today based on what we think our rate of return will be. So those are the three steps we're gonna go through now. Our scenario for our present value annuity due calculation is Kim. She wants to retire in 15 years and she wants to receive the equivalent of a retirement income of $50,000 at the beginning of each year. Now remember, that would be $50,000 in today's dollars. She also wants the income to adjust annually for inflation. She believes that inflation will average 4% and that she can earn 7% on her investments. Assuming she wants to plan for 25 years of retirement, how much will Kim need to invest today in order to provide the desired income? Okay, let's go through this three-step process now. The first step we're gonna start with is she says she wants to get $50,000 a year at the beginning of each year. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take $50,000 and that's gonna be our present value. And she wants to retire in 15 years. So 15 is gonna be our number of compounding periods and we're gonna be concerned about inflation. We wanna maintain our buying power. Kim wants to maintain our buying power. So the, rate, and the interest rate we're gonna use, the interest rate per year is gonna be the inflation rate, which she wanted to be 4%. All right, so using a 4% inflation rate, present value of $50,000 over 15 years, we then solve for future value. And when we do that, hopefully you should get $90,047. And when we go through these calculations, I'm gonna leave off the cents. We'll round to the nearest dollar. Okay, so now we're ready for step two. Step one was just a simple future value, time value of money calculation. In step two, what we're going to do is determine what lump sum, what present value do I need at the beginning of retirement that then will fund the retirement benefit for Kim for the 25 years. Now remember, Prior to any calculation, set up the calculator, and it's extremely important on this particular calculation here because we do need to be in the begin mode because Kim will need the money at the beginning of each year to pay for that year. So, you're in the begin mode, set up for one period per year, one compounding period per year, do the clear all, and then you should see the one period per year. Double check that and you're ready to go. All right, now this is gonna use an inflation adjusted return now because Kim has $90,047 as her first payment, but each year that payment is going to need to go up because she's gonna to need to take into account inflation to maintain her buying power. So that's why we use an inflation adjusted return. So remember, our rate of return was 7%. So we're gonna take that 1.07, one plus the rate of return divided by one plus the inflation rate, 1.04. Then we subtract one and then hit the equal sign and you should come up with 0 0.02885. And remember now we want to convert it into a whole number because remember that's what we enter into the calculator. So when we do that, we should get two point, where is the number now? 2.8846, and then you're going to enter that as your interest rate per year. All right, so that's your interest rate per year, your inflation adjusted return. Now we need to put in the other variables. Our payment amount is going to be $90,047, so enter that as a payment, and that will be a positive number, because think about it, that'll be money that's coming to her each year. It's over 25 years, so 25 will be your number of compounding periods. And then we're gonna be solving for present value. In other words, what's the lump sum I need today to then fund this retirement benefit, taking into account inflation for 25 years. And when you do that calculation, hopefully you'll come out with 1,634,171.50.
And remember, if you do the calculation the way we just did it, where we do the inflation adjusted return and directly enter that 2.8846 when we solve for it, this is the number you come up with. If you were to do this calculation and enter the 2.8846 by itself, in other words, not do the calculation before you get to that number, your answer will be off by just a few dollars. But again, it's, it will not be enough to get you too far off the correct answer. So rounding things like that, don't worry about. When you're dealing with long periods of time, there are bound to be some rounding errors sometimes, or rounding differences, I should say. And that's step two. Okay, and now we're ready for the final step. In step two, we solve for the lump sum needed at the beginning of retirement to fund the retirement benefit. Came up with the $1,634,171. And this now is going to become our future value. That's what we need 15 years from now. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take the rate of return, which is 7%, and we're gonna discount that 1.6 million back at 7% over the 15 years and solve for present value. In other words, what amount of money would we need right now that we earn 7% on and then get to the 1,634,171 that we need? So when you do this calculation and solve for present value, hopefully you'll come up with $592,299. So what that means is if Kim has $592,299 right now, she makes her 7% assumed return, she'll then have the lump sum amount that she needs to fund her retirement benefit. Next, we're gonna take a look at a serial payment calculation for a future sum. And serial payment, all that means is we're adjusting the payment each year for inflation. You can have a level payment, which of course would be the same payment year after year, or you can have a serial payment, which means you're adjusting the payments each year for inflation. When we did the calculation for that retirement income needs scenario, we used a serial payment in the second step because we wanted to maintain our buying power throughout retirement. Now, we're gonna be looking here at saving towards a certain dollar amount, a goal amount. And there are two ways to approach it. You can have a level payment each year, or you could have a serial payment. Now someone might say, well, why would you choose one over the other? Well, the level payment is very easy to calculate. You just take a future value, whatever the goal amount is, and then solve for payment, depending upon what sort of return you think you could get. And a level payment would look like this. In other words, what you would be doing is paying the same amount each year, earning whatever rate of return you get, and ultimately getting to your goal. Now, a serial payment takes into account inflation. So what that means is your initial payment will actually be lower than a level payment. And then each year your payment is going up by the inflation rate. So ultimately what happens is your payments start out lower, but at the end of the journey, your payments will be higher than they would have been under the level payment scenario. The important thing to realize is that either way, you're going to get to your future goal amount. Okay, for our serial payment scenario, let's take a look here at John Smith. It says in terms of today's dollars, John Smith needs $90,000 in three years to start his own business. He assumes that inflation will average 5% and that he can earn an 8% compound annual after-tax return on investments. What serial payment should Mark invest at the end of the first year? Okay, now let's do the calculation. And I've drawn a timeline here to show you exactly what's happening. Uh, the calculation's easier than this looks, but this will give you the dynamics of as far as what's going on. Now, in this case, he wants $90,000 in today's dollars. Now, if we were doing a level payment calculation, what we would do is we'd take that $90,000, inflate it by the 5% inflation rate each year, and you'd come up with 104,185 or 186 due to rounding. And that would be your future value and you'd solve for a level payment to get you there. That would maintain the buying power. Now, since we're gonna take into account inflation when we do this serial payment calculation, we don't do that. What we are going to do is we're gonna take that $90,000 that he needs in today's dollars and make it a future value. 
And this is confusing. I, the first time you hear it, you're like, well, why would I use today's dollars as a future value? That means I'm going to $90,000, not the 104185 or 186. Well, as we'll see, we are going to get to that number. The fact that we're taking inflation into account each payment is going to take care of the inflation issue. Okay, so let's look at the calculation itself. He wants to save 90000 in today's dollars. We're going to use an inflation-adjusted return, since these are serial payments, inflation-adjusted payments. So we're going to take 1 plus his rate of return of 8%, divided by 1 plus his inf assumed inflation rate of 5%. Minus 1 will give us 0 0.02857. Multiply that times 100, make it a whole number. You'll get 2.8571, and enter that as your interest rate per year. That's our inflation-adjusted return. Now this is going to be for a three-year payment. Uh, period, three-year period, and then we're going to solve for payment. And when you solve for payment, you should come up with $29,158.95. However, we're not done yet. Actually, this calculation puts us here. We want to determine how much is he going to have to pay at the end of the first year. So whenever you solve for a serial payment, whatever you solve for when you hit the payment key, you are then going to have to inflate by whatever the inflation rate is to come up with the end of first year payment. So if I take that 29,158.95, multiply it times 1.05, the 5% inflation rate, that's when I should come up with 30,617. And that is going to be my end of first year payment. Now for the second year serial payment, we'd take the 30,617, increase it by 5%, and we'd come up with 32,148. And then for the final payment, again, we'd take the 32,148 now, increase it by 5%, come up with 33,755. So those are our three serial payments. Now realize these first two payments are going to make the 8% rate of return for the amount of time that they're invested. So the first payment for 30,617 will make 8% over two years. That will increase to 35,710. And the second payment of 32,148 will make 8% for one year, and that will increase to 34,720. Add to that the final payment of 33,755. And notice, voila, our friend here has 104,185, not 90,000. In other words, he has an inflation-adjusted amount that's maintained his buying power. And again, that's because we use serial payments to get there. So don't get confused when you do this calculation. In other words, when you do a calculation for a serial payment, whatever the amount is in today's dollars, use that as a future value. That's fine, because what will happen when you do the serial payments, you're taking into account inflation, and you will actually end up, the end result, will be an inflation-adjusted amount that maintains buying power. Congratulations, you've made your way through the intermediate time value of money calculations, and now on to some advanced calculations. I hope you join me. We're gonna take a look at unequal cash flows, and we're also going to take a look at a very useful calculation, how to calculate amortization.